Hey guys, Pastor Ben here with another review and reflection. Today I want to talk about a book I just finished listening to, an audiobook called In the Mind of Stalin, written by James uh, Greensmith. This is actually a very uh, recently published book. It only came out in April of 2023, and I'm recording this in uh, middle of September 2023. So it's just something that popped up in the uh, Hoopla app, the uh, kind of audiobook app that you can use for the library system in the United States and uh, looked interesting. So I thought I would give it a listen. Um, it's a modest sized work, about 220 some pages. Again, very recently published by an author that um, I really don't know much about. I couldn't find hardly anything about him online. It looks like he's written this book. And there's another book that I couldn't tell if he has written or if he's in the process of writing a biography of Vladimir Putin uh, as well. So obviously someone who has an interest in Russian modern Russian history, um, and um, so thought it was worth listening to, uh, and uh, did enjoy the book, uh, but let me kind of go through what Greensmith is trying to do, what I think he does well, and where I think there's maybe some room for critique or could have been better. So he's trying to uh, give a biography of Joseph Stalin, the uh, famous leader, dictator of um, the communist uh, party in in Russia in the early 20th century. Sorry about that. I was recording this and uh, one of my daughters needed help finding her water bottle. So it got that resolved. Anyways, this is a biography of Joseph Stalin, the dictator of the USSR, the communist regime in Russia uh, that came to power at the beginning of the 20th century. And Stalin was really uh, the first leader who had a kind of long multi-decade leadership and had a huge impact in many, many ways on Russia and on world history. So he is a, a character that is undeniably important, one of the most significant figures in world history, certainly one of the most significant figures in Russian history and, and definitely in the 20th century. So someone that's definitely worth knowing about. And what Greensmith is trying to do in this book is to walk us through Stalin's life but as the title suggests, you know, in the mind of Stalin, he's kind of trying to do maybe a psychological biography, we could call it, trying to get us into Stalin's thinking to help us understand what made him tick, what motivated him. And especially the question he's addressing is the question you have to face with Stalin. Stalin was was responsible for, you know, the exact numbers are debated. But even if you, um, you know, kind of gauge things conservatively, He's still responsible for millions and millions of deaths, probably tens of millions of deaths. Uh, it, it's astonishing when you look at the scale of what he did, either in directly ordering people to be killed um, or in uh, furthering policies that killed people uh, in all sorts of ways, not even counting you know, wars and things that were waged under his rule. So there's this huge death toll that Stalin, that Stalin is responsible for. And so one of the questions that any thinking person has to grapple with is, why would someone do that? You know, what's driving them? What's motivating them? How can we get into their mind? And that's part of what I think Greensmith is really trying to uh, get, uh, get a handle on and, and dig into. So he begins by kind of going through Stalin's um, upbringing. He uh, was actually not born in Russia. He was born in Georgia and um, grew up in a home that was very tumultuous. Um, his father um, had um, was was from kind of a working class background. His mother had aspirations for Stalin to be educated and kind of move on in life, and there was a big tension between uh, his mother and father over that point. Greensmith goes through some arguments and details that suggest, and it seems plausible based on what he shares, that um, Stalin's father that he grew up with may not actually have been his father. It may have been. Uh, a, a, a more uh, wealthy, you know, uh, kind of landed gentry uh, figure who lived in their town, who um, Stalin's mother worked for this man. And then this man was, uh, I believe, Stalin's godfather. He was present at his baptism and all of that kind of stuff. So there were some unusual kind of connections between the family, between the two families that don't really make a lot of sense. And the man who was Stalin's father that he grew up with as his father had been very peaceful and loving, and then after Stalin's birth became uh, very um, alcoholic, very aggressive, very violent, and finally walked off and abandoned the family. 
So Greensmith is kind of hypothesizing, and it seems like an educated guess, but a reasonable one, that there may have been unfaithfulness on the part of Stalin's mother that led to that division and wedge and that um, the, the, the abandonment uh, uh, of Stalin by his father is something that had a big impact on Stalin psychologically, which of course makes sense. Uh, Stalin did end up getting uh, an education. He actually was uh, attending seminary to become an Orthodox priest. Uh, of course, Eastern Orthodoxy was the um, kind of state religion, uh, cultural religion at the time. But as a seminary student, he he kind of chafed against the very um, oppressive background that was there. They were very rigorous about what you were and weren't allowed to read. And um, it was not a very enticing, attractive view of Christianity at all. Um, and uh, and yet yeah, Stalin got his hands on a copy of Charles Darwin's Origins of the Species. And reading that as a seminary student made him an atheist. And he abandoned religion, abandoned um, Christianity, and set his sights on something else. He ended up getting pulled into the kind of political discussions that were just ubiquitous uh, at that time and became a member of the Communist Party. And uh, Greensmith, you know, charts his journey into uh, communism, into uh, the leadership of the Communist Party, and then eventually into the top position as uh, effectively the dictator of Russia um, post the Russian Revolution. And so what Greensmith ends up walking through in the book is a lot of the details of Stalin's life, a lot of the atrocities that he committed, that's really what he focuses on, are the mass executions, the political machinations, uh, the paranoia that was just ubiquitous. And something that he leans on very heavily is the testimony of Stalin's daughter, Svetlana. Um, many people may be aware of this, but Stalin, uh, for all of the kind of horrible things that he did to people throughout his career, uh, at least early on, had a very close relationship with his daughter, Svetlana, and treated her very tenderly, very kindly. He would write these kind of doting letters and things. And later in life, she ended up actually fleeing to the United States and renouncing her father, renouncing communism, all of this stuff. And she wrote uh, about their relationship um, kind of from that, that vantage point. And so a lot of what Greensmith does is draws on her writings to give us some window into how Stalin thinks, what was motivating him, uh, that kind of thing. And so he quotes a lot from Svetlana. In fact, at times, and some of this may be because I was listening to it on audiobook, maybe reading this in print, I wouldn't have the same experience. But there were so many quotes, particularly from Svetlana's uh, memoirs, I believe, um, and from other authors, writers as well, that it became a little difficult for me to untangle, okay, is this Greensmith talking? Is he quoting somebody else? But there's a lot of fascinating information in what she shares about their relationship. And again, growing up, she thought of him as this warm and loving person. And it was kind of this slowly growing realization of who and what her father actually was that she had to come to, which I just, you know, you can't imagine uh, going through that. And of course, you know, eventually making her way out of all of that and coming to the United States. Um, and so the, the book kind of unfolds by drawing on different firsthand, um, uh, you know, sources who knew Stalin personally, who worked with him, going through the government records to chronicle some of the atrocities and things that he committed, um, and just, you know, walking us through all of the horrible things that Stalin did and trying to unpack some of why he might have done it. So this brings me to kind of working through what I think was good about the book and what I think was maybe a little lacking. So what was good about the book was, especially at the beginning, I felt like walking through the kind of origins of his family life was very interesting. And getting that window uh, through the eyes of his daughter into what it was like to grow up with Stalin was definitely fascinating. And I did feel like it um, it filled in some gaps that I had about, you know, what Stalin did and and who he was. And, and Greensmith does do a, a very compelling job of just kind of chronicling the range of atrocities and things that just don't make sense. You know, again, you can imagine, so, you know, there, for example, uh, Stalin, uh, you know, commanded the mass execution of um, German prisoners of war and then covered it up, denied it totally, or of Polish, excuse me, of, of Polish 
citizens and then blamed it on the Nazis. And then it was only recently that Russia actually admitted they were the ones who were responsible for that. So there's things like that that happen. But also, Stalin was so motivated by paranoia, he killed more officers, more Russian officers, than the Germans did in World War II. In other words, if you were an officer in the Russian army, you were more likely to be executed by the paranoia of your leader than by the bullets of your enemies, which is just astonishing to think about. And he had these purges of the military, these purges of the doctors. Um, he would uh, have executed not only political rivals, but family members and just, you know, all sorts of things. So Greensmith walks you through all of that and you get a full uh, feel for just the horror of what this man did. Um, so for all of those reasons, and again, Stalin was so significant and the death toll is so staggering, you have to grapple with who this man was and what he did. It reminds you, you know, I, I look at this as a, as a Christian, and particularly as someone who believes in original sin, the fact that it's not just that Stalin is this terrible person, but that uh, my heart, your heart, uh, all of us in Adam uh, are fallen. And while by God's grace, we don't manifest the same degree of outward sinfulness, inwardly, we have the same rebellion, the same heart that's at play. And so we have to be watchful and ultimately we have to um, not lean on our own goodness or wisdom or understanding again in Stalin's mind all of his decisions made sense um, but we have to to give our lives over to Christ as the one who can renew and remake us in his image so it's a powerful picture of that you know modern man wants to kind of at, at certain times act like through our own you know, will through our own wisdom, through our own winsomeness, whatever it is, that we can achieve this utopia. And yet when you see people like Stalin, who thought they were ushering in utopia, and you see instead, it's not utopia, it's hell, it, it just pictures for you how humble we need to be as people, and how much we need to rely not on ourselves, not on our politics, but on God. So all of those lessons, I mean, Greensmith doesn't talk about any of that, right? I'm, I'm extrapolating those lessons myself, but in light of the gospel, that's uh, how I was kind of hearing this book. So there's a lot there that's hard to grapple with, but good to grapple with. So I felt like it was worth reading for that. It gave me insight into Stalin's early life, detailed the atrocities he committed, and then just drives home those gospel lessons. However, there were some things that left me kind of, uh, I don't know, dissatisfied with the book, maybe the word. I mean, just thinking about if I was giving this a rating, I'd probably give it like three out of five stars. It was a solid book. It was decently well written. It's not overly long, 220 some pages. However, there are, there are two things I would say. So one is um, what, what Greensmith is trying to do, as I said at the beginning, is to write a kind of psychological biography. And there's a couple of concerns with that. Number one, it's always a little risky to kind of try to psychoanalyze people from the past. And he, he does that. So he'll talk about, you know, the horrible things that his father did to him, or Greensmith will talk about the paranoia he experienced, you know, that kind of thing. And then he'll start citing these studies of, oh, such and such psychologist shows that people who experience these things are more likely to do those things. And so maybe that's what Stalin was. And so there's some of that kind of armchair psychologizing that takes place. And I just don't know how helpful that is, to be honest, um, just in general. But then particularly with Stalin, that's really hard to do. I don't really think you can do it. So I, I think the project itself was maybe a little flawed just because Stalin was very private, very secretive. There was no official biography of him. And that leads to the kind of fundamental frustration I have with the book. Even though the book was cast as a biography of Stalin, and it was cast as something that would bring you into the mind of Stalin, I don't feel like I know Stalin after reading that book. I feel like I know certain things about him, but I don't feel like I know what was really motivating him or driving him. And because he was so focused, Greensmith was so focused, I mean, on like chronicling the, the atrocities that um, Stalin committed, you, you almost become numb to that. And I didn't really get a sense of the flow of his life, right? What was he doing with the party? What was his goals with Russia? Um, that was, there's a very kind of thin picture of that. So I, I, I read this biography of Stalin and I feel like I still need to go read a good biography of Stalin because I don't think I've got a good grasp on him after Greensmith's book. And one thing that kind of accented that for me at the end of the book, this is this was interesting, a little strange, but um, Greensmith just launches into this 
um, uh, kind of run run through of contemporary Russian history, and by contemporary I mean like things that have happened in the last you know five, ten, fifteen years. And really, what Greensmith is doing is he's trying to argue that Putin, that Vladimir Putin, is just continuing on everything that Stalin did, and he's sort of talking about how dangerous that is. Now, politics aside, right? I'm not saying that that view of Putin is wrong entirely. I think Putin has committed clear atrocities uh in his own way and things and you know i i I've, there's no love lost between me and uh putin's regime so i'm not here to defend him but it was a weird move for a book that's cast as a historical biography to just kind of launch into um this argument about the connections between these things that he doesn't really demonstrate um it seemed like an advertisement for his his other book <laughs> his other biography of vladimir putin so that felt a little strained at the end and uh, and made the whole book kind of take on a polemical tone that hadn't really been there throughout. But looking back, it's like, is that just what you're trying to do to just say Stalin is this terrible person that's psychologically damaged? And oh, look, there's another one in power in Russia. Um, I almost think that was maybe Greensmith's goal. So um, again, uh, it, it was it was worth listening to as I was, you know, exercising and stuff um, to pass the time. Uh, and definitely had some interesting insights, but I think what I'd be more inclined to do would be to go read Svetlana's uh, memoirs. I think her memories would be more dynamic, bring you more into that person and walk you more through that life um, than Greensmith's book. But uh, all in all, something uh, worth looking at if you're interested in these things. And uh, again, it's something you can you can find for free on the Hoopla app, so it's worth, worth listening to there. But those are my thoughts on James Greensmith's book, uh, the, in the mind of Stalin.